gentlemen, welcome back to the Muskox live stream. There you are, everybody. Welcome back to Mentor Minnesota. We are especially glad to have all of you who are digging out from a massive blizzard with us. We've seen blizzards in New York, Ohio, South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota, records amount of snowfall, tons of problems out there. And so if you are looking for the snow solution that is going to help you dig out more efficiently from these massive late season storms and also make sure that you've got the longevity of a machine that's going to give you plenty of runtime, it's going to last you the entire season without changing parts, without having to replace parts, without having to get it maintenanced, we think we've got something in store for you. Here in Mentor, Minnesota, it is currently 24 below zero wind chill. Air temperature is 15 below. And in the last three, uh, sorry, in the last week, we've had three major blizzards, all three of which closed highways and freeways in the region. So with some solutions for you and with something to say about how you can more efficiently move snow away from wherever you're living, I'm going to throw it off to our co-founder, co-owner, all-around snow removal guru, Adam Bergman. It's all yours, Adam. Hey, welcome, everybody. It's Wednesday at uh, Muskox, so we're doing our virtual demo. The reason we're out here today is for you guys, the operator, to see us in action, see us live, and the best thing we can do is interact with you guys. So if you've been following us, have interest in our product, or maybe we've talked to you recently and you're watching today to see the machine in ask action, go ahead and ask us questions. We're gonna do the best we can to show it in action, show off the reasons why people have been buying muskox throughout the United States this winter, um, but also to find out the unique questions that you guys do have. Today, Ron's not with us. It's gonna be my younger brother, Noah, who's gonna be operating the machine. He's coming in right now. You guys can see it in action. As Noah's moving forward, he's in a traditional snow blowing position. You can see we get plenty of clearance with our snow. It's blowing far out there. You can see it operates as a normal, normal snow blower. Noah, you can go ahead and stop the machine right about there. And then I'm gonna take Peter with me, get an idea of the snow that we're going through today. So we've hauled in snow. Like John said, we had a blizzard. We had a lot of blowing snow that came in. So we hauled in some snow into a driveway. We're doing a two stall garage today and we're going over stamped concrete. So the stamped concrete we're going over, we really don't want to scratch that surface, but we do want to scrape it. So we're going to show off how we're able to do that. So you're going to see areas where we probably have two, three inches of snow where I'm standing up to about 12 inches of snow. So to get down close, you guys can kind of see an idea of the type of snow and condition that we're going through. Like John said, it's about 24 below real feel right now. So we got kind of a dry type of snow without a lot of moisture that's sitting inside of it right now. And as we get into the muskox, I wanna talk about when we're doing snow removal, it's not much fun to do it when it's 24 below. And it's also not much fun to do this. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a shovel, have Peter come with me. Noah, you can stay out there for a bit, but this is what's not fun when it comes to snow removal. Getting out and have to shoveling the snow in front of a garage door. It's not safe, it's not fun, it's hard to find operators that want to do that, and it's not fun when we're doing it at our personal home. So today we're gonna to show how we at Muskox have changed the industry a little bit and are starting to eliminate the need for this, the shovel. Noah, why don't you go ahead, pull forward, and show the muskox in action. For you guys just joining us right now, the muskox 2278 dually is running in a traditional snow blowing position. So you guys that have seen our video, see we have a few different things. We also do operate in a traditional way where we're moving forward and eating through snow. We're eating through snow that's anywhere from six to probably close to 18 inches of compacted snow. Snow is coming up to the wall. He's gonna go ahead and rotate the machine, get into our back drag position, which is our patented feature. And now he's backing up, clearing the surface. 
Watch as snow is going back. Snow is blowing out of the chute. So we do continue to blow snow while we're back dragging. Noah, if you want to go ahead and lift up the machine. Peter, I'll have you come with me. Lift up the machine a little bit. For everybody that's just joining us, thank you. I'm Adam with Muskox Snowblowers. We're live here today in Mentor, Minnesota, roughly 24 below. And we're just showing out the unique features. The best thing that we can do is to work with you guys as the operator. So a lot of you guys we've talked to recently or you're just fi finding us for the first time, we're here to answer any questions that you guys have and give you an up close feel of how the muskox works. Today we're running with our 2278 Dually, which is our two auger system. It's our most popular model. It's 78 inches in width. Um, it's been real successful for us. I think we've sold them in a roughly 17 states in the United States so far this winter. And what we're here for is to really make it efficient for when you guys are running your operation to shovel less and to get down to the surface. If you watched a little bit earlier, Noah came up. Peter, we could show off the driveway. He's come through and taken care of the driveway. Now, not only did he blow the traditional position moving forward, but he got into our patented back drag feature where we're able to back drag and you can see the surface. We're on scrapes or on stamped concrete right now. We are able to scrape the surface without scratching it. And we're aggressive with our rubber cutting edge, back dragging to allow this to happen. So I'm gonna step out and we're gonna have Noah come up and go one more time for anybody just joining us. And we're gonna run the machine in the traditional position that you guys have seen snowblowers do for a long time. Then you'll get a chance to see it get into a back drag position. And before we do that, why don't we introduce Noah? Noah's my younger brother. Um, my father and I have the company and Noah's a big part of it. Um, for you guys that have bought machines from us, he's the guy that takes care of setting that machine up and getting it sent out to you. When I say set up the machine, the reason he does that is because we work on all brands of skid steers. Today we're running on a John Deere that we got from a partner of ours, RDO Equipment, that sells the machine in 36 different locations. The machine we have today is a high flow machine, but the Muskox does work on high standard and low flow machines. We're able to do that because we have four different motor sizes. So when you guys work with us, we kind of custom build the blower for you. So we find out the machine you're gonna run it on, get the right motor size for the most efficient tip speed so you can blow snow as far as you want to. Um, we also work with you to get the right electronics hooked up. So today, again, it's a John Deere, but we work on every brand of skid steer out there. Uh, Bobcat Toolcats, ASVs, Kubotas, Cats, any machine we're currently operating on right now, we get the electronics. And Noah, who you're gonna get a chance to meet right now, is the guy that you end up contacting, uh, reaching out to, and he gets that machine set up for you. Noah, if you want to say hi to everybody before you come forward and uh, hello, hi Noah. Yes, hello Pete or John. <laughs> it's okay, you've got a lot going on. It's good to see you, yep. Noah. I'm yes, have, it's good to be here. Right, well, you go ahead and back drag. I'm going to make sure that Adam is standing on his mark for his uh, his narration spot, and okay. uh, you go ahead and you do your thing. We'll be watching. Sounds good to me. For you, you guys just joining us, Noah's coming forward in a traditional snow blowing position with the Muskox 2278 Dually. He's running it with a John Deere high flow machine. It does run on high flow, standard flow, and low flow um, skid steers that are out there. He's coming forward in the traditional position. You guys have seen this for years. And now we get to our unique feature. With the Muskox, we're able to rotate the machine and create a new second point of contact and back drag so we're shoveling significantly less in front of the garage doors. As you guys can see, the snow is still blowing while he's back dragging. It's a common question we get when you back drag, does it blow snow? And it absolutely does. Seeing the machine up close. Now, Noah, if you want to back up a little bit, and we usually show, and I'll talk to Peter's camera a little and we blow but we also have the option like if you're around vehicles uh, we all have that right we're going out doing snow removal and you hope the homeowner you're doing it for has moved all their vehicles and that's not always realistic so we are able to run the muskox snowblower also without running the augers and back drag and blow, pull snow back without blowing it so you got to see it back drag and blow 
Now I'm going to have Noah come up and show it back drag without blowing. Hey, uh, Adam. Yeah. While you get into your position there uh, on camera number one, my camera, we've got a question from Tech Mogi. Tech M O G O R. They're wondering about auger size, fan diameter, and shoot rotation degrees. Oh, also, Betty wants to say that you're doing a very nice job <laughs> narrating. So I'm going to put you on my camera right now, Adam. You can say uh, you can say hello to, oh, to everybody. Well, I do know a Betty very well. So if it's Betty Tangen, thank you very much. I'm guessing it's you reaching out. And uh, she's like a second mother to me and think the world of Betty. So thanks for, uh, thanks for joining in, Betty. Let's get close to the machine and answer some of those questions. So we were talking about auger sizes. Yep. So we run two different augers on it. So we have our main auger that's hydraulic and it's direct drive. And that main auger is about 17 inches in diameter. We then have a second auger up top that's about 10 inches in diameter. You guys might be wondering, why do you guys have two augers? Yeah, it looks cool. Um, but the other reason we have it is when we get into our back drag and blow position, there's naturally a gap between that main auger and our rubber cutting edge that creates about a 14 inch gap. So if we don't have that second auger, when we're back dragging, we're pulling 14 inches of snow before it gets a chance to come out through our chute. With this machine, we now have a second auger that's 10 inches in diameter, and it really helps take care of that snow. So when you're trying to do this efficiently, fast, you're trying to get driveways done real quick, when you're back dragging, it gets a second chance to collect that snow and blow it out the chute. So that is the two augers, that's the sizes of it. And then if you wanna drop the machine, Noah, real quick, it's a great question about the chute. And what I'd like to do is switch over to the camera that's inside the cab. Yep. Look out at me. Yeah, and go. now as you guys can see that shoot, two things, we'll talk about the rotation, but I also wanna highlight the feature where we have a lowered shoot. So as you guys can see, and you're looking out to me right now, the shoot is not obstructing Noah's line of sight. With a lot of other snow blowers, that shoot sits really high. So if you're sitting looking at me right now, you'd probably be about right here that you'd be able to see because the shoot would be sitting there. Peter, if you come over with me real quick, and Noah, can you confirm, uh, you got, we got you on the camera here, sort of picture in picture. Uh, how's your visibility? It's great. I mean, the chute, it's down at about knee height, so you don't get any impediment in your line of sight. So Perfect. it's pretty convenient that way. Perfect. And now as we look with Peter's camera, if we look back and look at Noah, you can see roughly that chute sitting just below his knees to get a good idea of that chute. Now, the other deal with our chute, to answer that question, I'm gonna stand over in this corner. Peter, kind of stay, head over that way a little bit. See if you can, I don't know if the lighting's right. Hey, uh, but, Adam, you can always yeah. use my camera, I got you. Okay, between the two of you, let's rotate that chute, Noah. You guys can see it, rotates about 280 degrees. So now Noah's all the way to the left side. Now he's coming back over to me. And as you guys can see, if he was blowing snow right now, he's blowing it over the shoulder of the machine. It's a pretty neat feature that we have with it. So we're able to put snow in areas that other blowers maybe haven't been able to by rotating that 280 degrees. And we'll get into it in a little bit. We'll get a chance as we're blowing over a mound. People do ask with that lowered chute, are you able to blow snow a long ways? And we absolutely able, are able to. If you ask the specific question, how far does it blow? It blows as far as the competition and it really depends on the snow condition. So if you have wet, heavy snow, how far the distance it's blowing out might be 20 feet. If you get days like today where it's dry snow and there's some wind, you could be blowing that 60, 70 feet. So it really depends on the snow condition, but you're gonna be comfortable with how far the snow is blowing and how high it blows. Peter, if you wanna turn around and let's look at our snow bank back there real quick that we'll be blowing over so everybody gets a chance. I'm gonna go stand in front of that. I'm roughly six feet tall. This gives an idea of the height that we'll be blowing over. So when Noah comes through and does another pass, you guys could see that as part of the angle, I'm sure with the cameras that we have, how high that snow is blowing over the top of that. So Noah, if you wanna back up, and uh, Peter, let's take a look one more time for anybody that's just joining us. This is the type of snow that we're coming into. We have anywhere from a minimum of probably six inches of snow to piles of probably when we get in here, 
closer to 18 inches of snow. So I'm just getting down as hard packed snow that we hauled in. Yes, we had a blizzard around here. Uh, we had 60 mile an hour winds for about a week. School was canceled and that's always fun, by the way, when you have two kids, mine are uh, 12 and 11 years old and uh, school cancellations are kind of tough when you're mom and dad and working and figuring that out as you guys all know. Um, but 18 inches of snow, it's hard packed snow that we're going through today to give an idea of that condition. We're hoping it starts to warm up. We've been brutally cold in Northwest Minnesota, but hopefully this spring we'll get that wet snow condition so you guys all get a chance to experience that. So I'm gonna get out, out of the camera. Um, let's turn around Peter and just look at the machine with your camera real quick. Get an idea on that dual auger. We have our 2278 dually is what we're demoing today. It retails for $12,995. Uh, we've sold it to, I think, 17 different states as far as west as Alaska, as far as east as Maine, and pretty much every state in between that has snow, just to give an idea of the type of operators that are using it. And people that are buying the machine, we have people that are buying it for their home use, where they have shop space and they don't want to shovel in front of garage doors as much. And we have people that are doing lots of different driveways that are getting it done more efficiently and faster. And we are also selling it to people that do a lot of HOAs that are doing 100 to 600 HOA accounts and are really focused on safety and efficiency and want to shovel a little bit less. And we'll get a chance to uh, see the machine up close to show how that feature works. Noah, let it rock. <laughs> For you guys just joining us, we're operating in our traditional snow blowing position. You guys will see we have a side fin on the bottom of the machine. Peter's probably showing that up close. I'll get in to explain that, how that works, why that works, and uh, how come we put it on our machines. Yep. Noah's doing a great job, traditional snow blowing. Now, right, Noah, can you stop for just a second? Now, let's take, Peter, let's take that camera and let's show. You guys that do snow removal know why we're showing this. This is, we're getting close to a spot that traditionally we would may have to stop with the snow blower because now we're just gonna start pushing snow into the garage door. We gotta get out and shovel all of that. Now Noah, if you wanna back up so you can warm up the machine so you get an idea of that. I'm gonna grab that shovel one more time that I really don't like and it's plastic and it breaks and all the things and Got people I work with that get mad when they gotta do that. I gotta get out here and shovel all of this off in order to have me as a homeowner happy or me that's doing it for a living to be able to accomplish that for the customer. So now Noah will be able to come in and show how we're gonna eliminate that and use the shovel less. Hey Adam. Yeah. So I'll have you get into position in front of my camera and uh, We'll go ahead and do picture in picture here. You can narrate through what, what Noah's doing. And we got a couple more questions for you that have come in. Sounds great. So Noah's now what we just talked about with our patented feature. He is getting close to the garage door. He's now engaging our second cutting edge, which is rubber, so it's not gonna scratch the surface. And he is back dragging and blowing at the same time. So as you can see, we're getting rid of that and we have been able to shovel significantly less in front of the garage door. Now watch, a lot of you guys ask, does it blow while we're back dragging? It absolutely does. We have that two auger system that really helps clear up that snow. So if you want to lift up the machine and see that he pulls back very little snow out to the street or in this situation, out to the gravel driveway. All right, got, questions that you got for me, John? Yes, two of them. First of all, uh, did we talk about fan diameter? Uh, that was one. And then the second one is from Randy. Hello, Randy. Randy is wondering, what is the hydraulic flow capability on the John Deere you are using in the demo? Uh, so those are both two questions to uh, fan diameter and our John Deere flow capability. So I'll let you answer those on my camera. Thanks. Sounds great. So fi fan diameter... I believe is 18 inches that we're running on the fan diameter that we have today. Um, I can get corrected on that, but I believe it's at 18 inches. And the machine that we're running today, great question, Randy, is with the John Deere, we have a high flow John Deere 
332G that we got from RDO Equipment, a partner of ours that sells it in 36 locations. And that machine's running at 36 gallons per minute. Uh, or, sorry, 41 gallons hey, uh, per minute. No, uh, Noah, can you repeat that? Let me make sure your mic is up. How, what was yep. that? How, how, what are we running at, Noah? 41 gallon per minute high flow. 31 and low flow, or standard, I should say. That's why he's smarter than I am. 41 gallons per minute we're running, so it's running at a high flow option right now. And probably what you're wondering, Randy, is does this work on different gallons per minute? And what we recommend is running at a minimum of 17 gallons per minute. And we have machines that are running it up to 45 gallons per minute. And the way we're able to accomplish that is we kind of custom fit that blower to the skid steer that you own. So when you get a hold of us at Muskox, whether you have a John Deere, a Kubota, an ASV, a CAT, a Bobcat, a Bobcat Toolcat, whatever machine it is you're running with, we end up putting a motor size that fits that skid steer. So the motor that you're running, if you have an 18 gallon per minute um, John Deere, is gonna be different than if you're running this 41 gallon per minute machine. So we custom fit that motor size to it. And then the other question when you have different brands is what is slightly different is these electronics. So we do set the electronics so the machine is plug and play when you get it. So you can plug it into electronics and then everything's ran through the hand controls. Adam? If you are, one second, yep. John. If you are somebody who does not have the electronics that run into the cab, we do have a joystick option. Uh, we have a handful of customers out there successfully running the Muskox using a joystick to rotate the chute. So if you have a steering wheel, for example, um, or if you have a machine that's a little bit older, doesn't have that option for the electronics, you could get a joystick to rotate that chute that goes 280 degrees. All right, we got a bunch of questions coming in out of us on okay. this topic particularly. So first of all, from Trax International, very specific yep. question. Yep. Will this fit on a, and I wanna get this right here, will this fit on a giant G3500 articulated loader? So that is the question for you, Adam. Sounds great. Why don't you put that down, and if we can get the number, can reach out to that company to research on that giant. Okay. I know we had a customer recently who was getting quoted out mm -hmm. with that particular machine. Mm -hmm. And with that articulated machine, fantastic machine to do snow removal, right? You guys are getting that for a reason. Should have a steering wheel with it that has a joystick. And let me get with that specific model, with that giant, with the articulating machine, if they can throw in their phone number or an email address of who to contact, and we'll take that offline and get exactly the fit and everything so we can do that Wonder machine. Wonderful, so Trax International will be in touch with you. If you're comfortable dropping your information in a comment, if not, we'll message you. Last question for on this particular topic. Um, Michael says, hey Adam, just got on, so forgive me if this is has been asked. Muskox working on a standard flow Bobcat. Does it work on a standard flow Bobcat? Great question and, and absolutely. So we work on low standard or high flow machines. Probably one of the most common questions we get. So right now we have people running a Muskox successfully um, all over the United States with machines between 17 gallons per minute all the way up to 45 gallons per minute. So we have four different motor sizes and those motor sizes really dictate and allow us to operate on all different brands and different sizes. So great question, sure appreciate it. Uh, Michael, any other questions you got for me right now? Uh, that is it, we had a sudden okay. flutter of them and yeah, I wanted yeah. to make sure we got them all done. Fantastic, I'm gonna get with Peter and his camera now. And I wanna talk about these side fins we talked about a little bit earlier. So right now you guys could see our side fin is engaged with the ground. On our original prototype, we did not have the side fin. So some of you guys have seen a few of our videos out on YouTube, this did not exist. And that was on our prototype machine. And what we learned through testing was that we weren't able to drive forward as fast as we wanted to, holding enough snow inside the box. So we designed these side fins that we put onto the machine that allows us to have higher road speed that holds snow inside the uh, box. A lot of you guys that are operators are totally following what I'm saying right now, and that's what those side fins are for. Noah, if you wanna lift up the machine, I'm gonna show how we can rotate those. So we can stop there. Peter could get up close, show we got a big bolt that holds that in place, but it's not in a permanent position. It does pivot up 
and back down. It needs to be able to pivot up and down because when we get into our back drag position, we want to create that same um, opportunity for the snow to stay inside the box. So it almost creates a straight line. So when you guys see us back drag, this rotates, gets into this position, holding snow inside the box. But when we're moving forward, if we come over here, Peter, you can see inside the Muskox 2278 dually that we have side fins that helps hold in the snow. So you guys will see video of us on the internet. You can check it out. We're going real fast down roads, holding that snow inside the machine. And kind of an important feature on there that we also added is that we have UHMW plastic that is on the bottom of that side fin. The reason we do that is we don't want steel touching the hard surface. What we found in testing and just experience of operating snow removal equipment is when steel is touching on hard surfaces, whether it's asphalt, concrete, stamped concrete, people got really nice driveways and that steel ends up scratching that surface. We want to scrape, we don't want to scratch. So ride in on that plastic. This machine right now has roughly um, about 240 hours on it that we've ran this particular machine this winter and it still has that same plastic from the beginning of the year so we're not wearing through that real fast it's a common question but if you guys do wear through it you guys can get those extra pieces for us they're real reasonable and it's just two bolts that you take out and you can replace and put that plastic back on there it's real nice it's uhmw show another spot we have some plastic up here so when we're back dragging this is what's touching the hard surface, not steel. And then when we get into our glide plate, you guys could see the white right in underneath here, and that's also UHMW plastic. So we ride on that so we're not scratching that uh, surface. And again, this machine has about 240 hours with the same plastics on it, so you can see they do stand the test of time. And I do want to get into that glide plate feature a little bit. John, I'll hop into your, your camera for a second. Yep. Um, what we're gonna do now is we've seen the back drag feature. Welcome everybody that's just joining us. I'm Adam with Muskox Snowblowers. Um, we're operating a 2278 Dually today with the John Deere 332G high flow machine, which is 41 gallons per minute. And we get that from RDO Equipment, a partner of ours that sells the machine in 36 different locations. We also sell direct to consumer all over the United States. Machine retails for $12,995. We've showed the back drag feature, which is our patented feature. We'll show that off again. But now I'm gonna have Noah drop the machine and go through our glide plate, which is a unique feature we have. Noah, if you wanna back up, kind of go up the driveway a little bit. And you can go ahead and stop there. Drop the machine down. Now, when we ride, this is our position we wanna be in. And I don't know, I think our Wi-Fi connection will bring us all the way out here. But you guys could see it's a little bit of a shadow, but when we ride, we ride on a glide plate rather than on the steel cutting edge in a natural position. I will show you in a bit, you can ride on a steel cutting edge when you want, shear any type of ice, but we ride in this position because the driveway we're on right now is a gravel driveway. And we didn't like how we were always picking up rocks when we rode on that steel cutting edge. We also didn't like if we accidentally ended up in the yard that we'd tear up all the grass because we were just so hard riding down on that steel cutting edge, which also wears out quickly. Gets to be a lot of maintenance taking care of those steel cutting edges. So now I'm gonna back out of this. Peter's gonna watch it and then pay attention to that glide plate and you'll see how we ride on that rather than the steel cutting edge in a natural position. So I'm gonna step out and then Noah, if you wanna go forward, and show the glide plate. Now, as Noah's moving forward, he's riding on a glide plate that has UHMW plastic, so we're not scratching the surface. Right now, when we're doing that, when we're blowing snow, if there was rocks or anything, the likelihood of picking those up is significantly reduced because we're able to ride on that glide plate. Noah, if you want to back up a little bit, and then why don't you engage the blower go in that same direction you were and blow that snow up to the big pile there. So Noah's engaging the snow blower right now and he's moving in a traditional position. He's riding on our glide plate that's not gonna scratch any surfaces. And he's going through and blowing snow in a traditional position. 
So this is great. You're able to go over for you people that have gravel driveways that are interested in this product. You're able to go up and down gravel driveways without picking up a bunch of rocks. All right, that's perfect, Noah. Now you guys could see we took care of this path. Now, Noah, if you want to get in that same position, Peter will try to do the best we can. Um, I know it's kind of hard to see with the shadows, but if you guys look into the machine right now, I'm showing the front angle when we ride in our traditional position, we're riding on a glide plate, you can see we have a steel cutting edge in there. That steel cutting edge, I'll show it up close shortly, has about 240 hours on it, it looks brand new. The reason is, is because we only use that steel cutting edge when we need to, and we want to shear ice or really dig into the, uh, into the snow bank and remove any type of uh, hard compacted snow. So Noah, if you want to take the machine and rotate it, like we're going to shear some ice, and you can stop right there. Now for all you guys viewing, hopefully I know it's kind of dark with the shadow in there, but you get a chance to see hopefully that steel cutting edge is now engaged to the surface. So we're able to offer that uh, when you want to. So I'm going to get out of the way. Peter, we both better step out of the way and uh, allow Noah to fire up the machine again. And then we'll see from the side and do notice, you guys were watching that glide plate below before. I'll show that real close before he goes. This is now off the ground because we've tilted the machine forward and are riding on that steel cutting edge. All right, Noah, if you want to go over your same path, get aggressive with it. And Adam, while he's doing that, I'll get you on my camera and we have a round of more questions. So whenever you're ready to talk about questions, we can do that. In the meantime, I'll have you on screen with uh, with uh, Noah blowing snow, okay? Sounds good. So, you're so no, Noah, why don't you, for answer those questions, tilt it again, like you just did, get aggressive with that steel cut-in edge. And I want, guys want you guys to pay attention. We went over it with the glide plate, so we wouldn't tear up grass or gravel, but watch when he gets rotated like that. Now we're creating kind of a, a new opportunity to get rid of more snow. And watch snow will be blowing out the chute as he moves forward. Go ahead and run it one more time. So as you can see, we're still finding some snow to be able to move forward now that we're riding on that steel cutting edge. Outstanding. All right, John, what kind of questions you got for us? All right, so we got a simple one and then we got a not so simple one. The okay. first question is, what happens if something gets stuck in the auger? Thank you, Mike. And then uh, someone has an uh, engineering question. So they're wondering, how come rather than, f how come we fit each tractor with a specific motor and a flow rate, uh, why don't we use a flow divider to set the flow for each skid steer and tractor uh, unit? So one about what happens if you get it stuck in an auger, and then the other question is, uh, why did we choose to go this route rather than using a flow divider? It's off to you. Sound, sounds great. So for the first question, and it's a great question, uh, one thing we did not like when we were doing snow blowing with other snow blowers was shear pins and shear bolts. It's 24 degrees, uh, or 24 below right now. You know what it's like to have to take off your glove in there, shear pin or shear bolt. These hands would be sitting out for, could be three minutes, could be 15 minutes taking care of that. That gets really cold in a hurry. So we did not like that. It was inefficient and it wasn't safe. So we use a hydraulic slip clutch with our snow blowers. So if you do get anything caught in the auger, the augers immediately stop. You don't bust any shear pins or shear bolts. It's the hydraulics that take care of that. So the machine stops. You're not gonna do any damage to the machine. You can kick the machine in reverse, so if it's any type of wood, it's gonna kick that out. Or if you got like a dog chain that got wrapped up in there, that's a real situation that happens. You're able to come out and remove that impediment. So the wood should be able to kick out with reverse. If it's a dog chain, you gotta go and cut it out. Still need to do that, but when you get done with that, you don't need to take care of the shear pit or shear bolt. The other thing that it eliminates without having those shear pins or bolts is that when that stops, with other machines, and there are quite a few people that use the slip clutch like we do now too, is that your chute doesn't plug up with snow. 
I used to hate that. I had to put, replace the shear pin, and then I knew I'd have a chute that would be clogged with snow, and it just took a lot of time to take care of that, uh, take care of that problem. The, the, the second question, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know, Noah, if you have any advice on that or if that's one we want to take offline with our engineer. That's, yeah, I think that'd be more of a question for dad, but I was also going to say the reason that the chute doesn't plug when the augers stop is because we have porting in our hydraulic block that's bigger than usual, so then the fan continues to run at full speed and clear out any snow that's in there without stopping it and plugging it. So. Yeah, absolutely, and that's a great point. So what Noah's talking about is when those augers stop, that fan continues to run until you shut that off and get outside the cab. So that's clearing all the snow that's out the chute. And that second question, I think it's probably a great question. We do have an engineer who's my partner on this, Ron. He happens to be uh, gone today. He's enjoying some sun in Florida, well-deserved a uh, couple days uh, doing that. But I think that's a great question that we want to take offline, get a better understanding of that, and be able to answer that one correctly, John. Sounds good, Adam. So we will, when Ron gets back, it's of course the one week Ron is gone, we get the really, really uh, interesting engineering question. So we will make sure in a future live stream, and also we'll reach out to you directly, uh, we'll answer that question about the flow divider versus the way that we do our flow. Uh, it's 11.30 here in the Midwest, so we should probably get these boys in soon. Adam, uh, I'm gonna get it back to you on my camera. Yep, sounds great. And that was a great question that you had, and those kind of questions are the type of questions that may lead to better options that we have. So we just really appreciate when you guys reach out and do that. Uh, we have a little bit of snow off to the side. I think what we'll do is show off our back drag feature one more time. We've kind of eliminated a lot of the snow in the driveway. Peter, if you turn around and look at me, driveway, we've done a two-stall garage, and we've really kind of taken care of that. But Noah, if you want to take the machine and maybe just start over on the right-hand side and just make a couple passes uh, going in the back drag position so everybody can see that rubber squeegee in action and see the opportunity and what we provide with a muskox snowblower at that second cutting edge that's rubber. All right. Sure. Um, maybe our new fan that we have inside the blower currently, or if we wanted to keep that for another time. I think, so what you guys are seeing right now is uh, we do have a slightly different fan that we're uh, looking at coming out with. And I think we'll take that and get a little bit closer to that on a future show. Um, so hopefully you guys will come back and check out a new plan that we're prototyping um, as we're moving forward constantly with the design of the Muscat Snowblower. So if you want to come over on this side of it, Noah, and then just back drag a few times so everybody gets a chance to see that. Sounds good. You know, we're, uh, we're dangerously close to having to do it. I think that's something you've been wanting to do, John. Very much so. All right. Now, now watch as that's blowing. We're getting over the top of that big mound that you guys saw before. And now rather than slowing down, Noah's running this a little more like we would if you guys were out doing this for a living or doing it on your personal residence. getting close, he's in the back drag position, riding on our rubber squeegee. The augers are currently spinning on the machine, and for any of you guys just joining us right now, we've cleaned up this driveway. We're just kind of showing that back drag feature that is very unique. Um, as we are able to pat that feature. No, I'm gonna have you come forward one more time, come up into the driveway, hop on with Peter's camera, and then I'll sign off here shortly. Everybody would rather see the machine run than me talk, I think. We have a little bit of snow out. When we get done with this, Noah's gonna run it a few passes out on a gravel driveway we're going over. You can see the surface we did right now was over concrete, it's stamped concrete. It's important to point that out that we're not scratching that surface at all um, when we go back, but we are able to successfully scrape it. Then I wanna show that rubber cutting edge up close. So this machine again has about 240 hours on it. It's the same water jet, water cut, rubber cutting edge that we've been using all season long. 
With this, you're able to take out these bolts at any time, slide that rubber cutting edge down to extend its life, and you can rotate it four different times to create a new edge. So common question for people, hey, how long is that rubber cutting edge gonna last? That's 240 hours into it, and we haven't rotated it yet. So it kind of sets the bar for that. So that's kind of a neat deal with the Muskox snowblower is how it's designed and ran, is the rubber cutting edge lasts a long time, and then that steel cutting edge on the bottom. Let's lift up the machine one more time. I'm gonna point that out close. Here's that steel cutting edge. That thing looks pretty much brand new on it. Really neat deal. Um, how that's designed, we just don't naturally ride on that. We do when we want to. Um, so we just have less maintenance when it comes to that. And you guys can probably see in there, there is plastic underneath that auger. And we do that to create more of a, a slope or a slide almost. So when we get into wet, heavy snow, we don't have that today, but when we do, it just helps slide that snow up. Um, John, did you have any other questions for me before we let Noah go out and do a couple of passes in the uh, driveway and they, everybody can see the machine run? No other questions, Adam. Uh, just letting the people who we're gonna talk to after the stream in IRL, just texting them, letting them know that we'll talk to them IRL. But I can put you on my camera and uh, we'll send uh, we'll send uh, we'll send you off. Thank you. Sounds great. So Noah, if you want to go back up, whatever direction you want to go, probably turn around, go out to the road, and then come in a forward position, and we'll blow out the little bit of snow we have left in the driveway. Uh, we didn't do it this week, but we have previous weeks um, where we take and actually time doing the driveway. Very important question, common question. Two stall garage, and we do it in about just under a minute is uh, how quickly we're able to do a two-stall garage. I think we timed it at like 50, 51 seconds is the deal. So let's just watch that machine, do the action. Um, coming forward, traditional position. It's 24 below we're at. This gives a good idea of how far we blow that snow, even with that lowered chute. Again, we have that lowered chute for be better visibility. And we probably are doing it, but let's get into the cab a little bit and show that from the operator's perspective, what they'd be seeing right now. Absolutely. So Noah, let's go forward one more time and then you can see where Noah moved forward. That's a traditional snowblower, right? And we're leaving a little bit of snow. But now Noah, when you get all the way to the end, of that snow that you're doing. Let's go ahead and put it in the back drag position and back out, go put the uh, snow blower away for the day. But you'll get a chance to see how having that, we left a pile of snow before. Now when we get to our back drag, you can see the snow is still blowing and now he's eliminated that. Oh, maybe we can't see it, the snow dust. Yeah, what? So, Peter, let's look at this right now. So, right where I'm at, standing right here. So, you can stop for a second, Noah. So, this type of snow, right, if we're in a traditional snow blowing position, we're blowing forward and we're usually going to leave this kind of snow just because we don't have a chance to back drag with uh, other snow blowers that are out there. So, Noah will take it, come up to the snow, back drag, and pull it out. You guys can see how that's going to save you time, money, safety. Um, we're currently selling to all sorts of different customers. Uh, we have people that use it for personal use and we have a lot of commercial operators who are doing it for residential driveways and HOAs. Uh, school districts are really starting to uh, be a part of our customer base as they're finding the importance of being able to use this to get up close to any type of doors. So if you have garage doors, you have doors on buildings, anywhere where you want to shovel less when it comes in front of that, the Muskox is a great fit for you. Uh, we had our 2278 Dually today that we're demoing retails for $12,995. If you guys are joining us a little bit later, uh, we're running it with a John Deere 332G. That's 41 gallons per minute, has the high flow option, uh, but we do sell this to machines between 17 and 45 gallons per minute. We're able to accomplish that because we have four different motor sizes. So we work alongside you guys to get the right motor size for your operation. And we work on all brands of skid steers. All it is is a different electronic hookup to be able to plug and play any new brand of skid steer. So thank you everybody today. I will get out of the camera and let Noah kind of clean up this pass with our back drag feature 
and you can see uh, the reason why we're successful right now. Pretty neat, huh? Snow is gone. All right, John, if you don't got anything else for me, uh, we do uh, do these quite often on Wednesdays. We may be taking next Wednesday off uh, just because we have a few other things that are going on with our, our product, which is exciting. Um, but we'll be in contact with all you guys through Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all those other social media platforms. So we appreciate everybody getting on today and. John, if that's it, I'm going to come in and warm up my hands. Come on in and warm up, Adam. That's it. Thank you, everybody, so much for being here today. Uh, if you had a question that we didn't get a chance to answer, please, you can still drop it in the comments. We will be monitoring those as the day goes on. And uh, for those of you who we're going to reach out to afterwards, we'll be in touch as quickly as possible. Uh, there's a number at the bottom of the screen right here. Uh, if you are interested in hearing more about how the muskox could work for you and your business, uh, we have people standing by to answer those calls right now. So with that, we're going to cut back to beautiful Mentor, Minnesota, and we're going to send you all off. Thank you so much for watching today, folks. Really, really appreciate it.